It's a pleasure to be here again this year and with same company, except I was sitting here next to Nadia. Uh, and we were kind of reminiscing over uh, the activities of uh, U.S. Ukraine Foundation and uh, Ukraine 2000 before and Ruch, uh, the Ruch Committee even before starting in 89. Uh, my role is basically to let you know what's happening in the area of rule of law, uh, judicial reforms, and uh, judicial independence. Uh, and, and really, uh, I will just try to highlight some of the events uh, that have taken place, and some of them you are very much familiar, and the hopes and aspirations that we all had. And starting with uh, 204, uh, naturally, there was a famous uh, uh, decision by the courts. Uh, Yushchenko v. CEC, the decision was given on December 3, 2004. And for the first time in the history of Ukraine, the fate of a nation rested solely upon the decision of a Supreme Court. On that day, December 3rd, after five days uh, of uh, deliberations, of taking testimony, and seven hours of deliberation by the justices, uh, the Supreme Court issued its historic decision ordering a new election. The, ele the previous elections, the runoffs, were declared to be fraudulent and invalid. In the opinion of many, it restored, this decision restored the dignity of the entire judiciary and instilled hope in democracy. This case uh, by, uh, was compared by many, including your speaker here, to Marbury v. Madison. By the way, um, March 3rd, uh, no, I'm sorry, February, February 3rd was the anniversary of the decision in Marbury v. Madison. That's just for your consideration. And April uh, 1710 was the, um, the adoption or the, the, the formulation of the Constitution of Pelip Orlik. That is almost 80 years before the Constitution of the United States of America. Now, the, this decision and the political reform that was adopted in 2000 and 2004, December 8th, and became effective as of January 1, 2006, uh, the political reform was a series of constitutional amendments adopted by the Verkhovna Rada. It solved the problem with the presidential elections, but it created a legal constitutional crisis. Uh, in a decision of October 5, 2005, by the Constitutional Court, uh, it, uh, uh, it's, the court said that the uh, political reform was a change in the political system of Ukraine from a presidential to a parliamentary system, and therefore, besides all the requirements of the uh, amendments in the Constitution, it also required a national referendum. Naturally, there was no national referendum. Uh, so the court felt that this was the political reform at that time was unconstitutional. In all my writings at that time, I agreed with that decision, and the political reform should have been uh, voided uh, at that time. Now, uh, not only it was not voided, but in uh, August of 2006, uh, President Yushchenko signed into law legislation prohibiting the Constitutional Court from interpreting the political reform, a legislation that was 100% unconstitutional, and yet this was signed by uh, President uh, 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 Yushchenko. Now, I, I like to point out some of the other movements of President Yushchenko during this time, just for you to have an understanding of the development of this legal crisis that Ukraine is experiencing right now in the courts. 
uh, during his presidency, uh, President Yushin Kumar and the previous presidents started to summon up judges and reading them or uh, talking to them or lecturing to them or reading them the Riot Act on how the judges should act independently about judicial independence. Naturally, this judicial independence was in the style of Mr. Uh, Yushchenko. The same approach was taken during this time also by the Speaker of the Parliament as well as the Prime Minister, but to a lesser extent. The practice that the President at that time also instituted was dismissing the judges for violating the oath of office. Uh, however, up to this day, there's no explanation or no definition as what this means, what does it mean to violate the oath of office. And the courts have stated so and reinstated some of the judges that the president had fired, especially, I'm going to mention one uh, judge's name, uh, uh, Susanna Stani, the former minister of justice that was fired. Uh, by President Yushchenko, the court reinstituted her uh, in the position of, it, of the, uh, to the Constitutional Court, and yet Mr. Yushchenko fired her again. So you have all of these developments taking place. And, and, and lastly, uh, there was a, a, an effort by the president at that time to amend the Constitution. But the effort was not through the constitutional process itself, the amendment process, but it was through a public discussion, a general discussion, uh, a, a, a national discussion, and a national assembly. Naturally, that did not go far, and uh, everything ended uh, uh, without much success. Now, the Constitution was adopted on June 28, 1996. It set up the system, separation of powers, rule of law, etc. However, the judicial system did not, uh, the Constitution provided a term for the judicial system to, be, to become in effect, and that term was five years. So it was not until 2001, really, that a, the judicial system started to comply with the requirements of the Constitution. And we call that the, the small judicial reform was adopted in 2001. One. So from that time on, there were a number of attempts to amend the Constitution for the judiciary in order, or pass laws in order to comply with the Constitution concerning the judiciary. Uh, last year, in, in uh, um, July of 2010, uh, the Parliament uh, adopted a, a law on the judiciary and the status of judges. I'd like to make some comments concerning that. And I will start first with the, uh, by the way, USAID, the Venice Commission, the uh, Council of Europe, and other international organizations, in, including uh, Transparency International, have commented on this, and they're, they're available for your consideration. Um, but especially USAID, in the conjunction with uh, the rule of law program in Ukraine that I'm involved, has done quite a bit of work. And some positive aspects of the new law on the judiciary uh, are as follows. The reduction of the number of judges of the Supreme Court. Uh, there were uh, 98 judges on the Supreme Court of Ukraine, and that number has been reduced to 20. Uh, the requirement of financial disclosure uh, for the judges, uh, the provision for training and improvement of the judiciary, the inclusion, very important, the inclusion of the state uh, judicial administration within the judicial branch of government, the streamlining of filing a judicial uh, complaints, and the improvements of the financing of the judiciary. All of these are positive provisions, and uh, I'd like to underscore them, as well as the uh, automatic uh, random assignment of cases, which is, again, and uh, political political uh, uh, neutrality. 
Now, having said that, let me now point out to some of the controversial provisions and some ones that really uh, mm, uh, require um, quite a bit of thought and to see what can be done. The Venice Commission already is, has filed its recommendations, uh, and uh, the rule of law program in Ukraine is working on them as well as the Council of Europe. Now, uh, the the um, uh, and, and one of these uh, points that uh, something has to be done is the power to create and liquidate courts by the president. Under the Constitution, Article 106, the president has the power to create courts. Um, in, in the United States, by the way, it's Congress that uh, can create uh, courts, um, establish courts as they are needed. Now, and, and the Constitution is one, 106, the president may create courts. But here the law states that the president may liquidate courts. Remember I told you the president, Yushchenko had liquidated some courts and wanted to liquidate some courts. Now this, the president will be liquidating courts. And you know what, what that would mean to the courts and the judges if they render decisions that the president does not like. So that, uh, that is a big problem. A uh, recommendation is that this has to be, uh, um, has to be deleted and such a, uh, such a provision is clearly unconstitutional.